you may or may not know that the American bison is one of the only animals that in the great you know, stress of life runs into the storm instead of avoiding the storm or running away from it. And I think there's a lot of real estate agents running away from the storm that is known as the buyer agency um, with the commission lawsuits, with the high interest rates and all the things. And I'm gonna tell you right now, while I am gonna be a bison in the coming year and double down on my buyer prospecting, I'm gonna tell you why, I'm gonna tell you what it looks like, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the commission lawsuits, and we're gonna dive in. What's up guys, Jeremy Kane, eXp Realty and the Real Estate Agent Playbook. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm gonna dive into this strategy because I think it's something that is opportunity. And I wanna bring all these agents and everybody who wants to work their tail off to have the best next year possible, whether that's 2024, you're watching on a recording or listening to the podcast, let's go, right? I want to provide as much value as I possibly can to you and some mindset stuff that may change your perspective on your coming year in real estate. So let's get into it. All right. So first and foremost, we need to understand the bison mentality. And the truth is that bison do run to the storm in hopes that they're going to get to the other side quicker than either standing in the storm, running away from the storm or taking themselves off course to avoid the storm. And so that's exactly what I want to do. And as you can see, you know, I have my uh, my bison logo hat. Uh, you can definitely find these on andrewfrasella.com and you can look into all of his personal excellence and all of that stuff. That's not what this is about, but the bison did give me the idea for the video. So I, I decided to support the hat. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to we're going to talk about this. And with the commission lawsuit and the changing, you know, the massive numbers that they're throwing out and all this stuff and the industry will never be the same and everything. Well, the truth is not much has changed yet. Right. And so I still see 95 percent of, you know, the agents offering a buyer agency co-op in the MLS. And so not much has changed, at least in my market. I did talk to somebody the other day in Florida and they said that or I think it was New Jersey, actually. And they said that it had been changed a little bit, but it still wasn't, you know, full on. And so certainly, right, if your market is absolutely changed and there's zeros every time a buyer agency kind of comes up, then we might have to change our mindset a little bit. But I'm also of the mindset that until things change, I'm going to go business as usual. And if everybody's running away from a certain, uh, you know, buyer or, you know, a certain thing, I'm going to run to it like the bison would, because if other people are trying to avoid it, that just allows market share to come up. And here's my thought. In most markets, it hasn't changed drastically. So we may have, you know, a year, two, five years, whatever it is. But if people are starting to pull away and say, oh, I need to focus on listings. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that I've been in real estate for 10 years. And since year one, people have been saying list or die, right? Every time you talk to an ad agency, they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna start with buyer leads, but we have seller leads too. And those seller leads never, you know, come to fruition. Getting seller leads has always been everyone's focus in the real estate industry. And so if you're a new agent and you didn't know that, you're just going into a really competitive, you know, melting pot, which I'm not saying you can't win and you can't do that, but it's nothing new that we all would love listing leads. So let's talk a little bit about that. So if more people are, you know, pushing away buyers and whatever, they're a little worried about their business. Well, I'm going to build up as many buyer leads as I can over the next 12, 24, 48 months, whatever it is, until we actually do see a massive change in this. And I'm going to continue to have the conversations, the, the conversations of compensation and all of that. But if it's business as usual on the MLS and the co-ops are still there, well, I'm gonna just collect all these buyers and I'm gonna have a ton of buyers and it's gonna be a lot easier if it did change forever for me to have as many listing leads as I need because those buyers are actually the people that I convert to listing leads down the road. And so that's, <clears throat> you know, my first mindset is get through the storm, get through it as fast as possible, collect all the friends and all the people you can while you're in it, and then, you know, provide value. I'm also dialing in my value proposition, and this is huge, right? And, you know, say for instance, I do get caught up, right? Because you could say, well, what happens if you get stuck with a, you know, low to no commission? Well, I'm gonna have a conversation with my buyers and we're gonna, you know, negotiate and say, hey, what can you afford? What do you think I'm worth? and so on. And so I'm going to get used to having those harder conversations if it does come to fruition. 
But if I'm running away from buyers and I'm, I'm leaving that, I'm telling you right now that buyer agency is not going away. We just need to get better at having the conversations and developing what's going on. So I'm gonna develop the skills to have the conversations and then I'm gonna dial in the value, right? And the honest truth is, I'm at a point in my career that if somebody says, hey, that's my, you know, like, I'm a first time home buyer, I'm just trying to get in this home, like I can give you a thousand bucks if the seller won't do it. And our contracts in Colorado are set up a little bit differently. So we do have the right to, you know, if the buyer is obligated to pay, we can insert that into the contract to buy and sell. I know in other states you have, you know, that upfront commission form and all of that. We don't have that in Colorado, but we can negotiate it into the contract. And so we're going to try. And if the answer is no, at the end of the day, right? Then I'm gonna say, okay, Mr. Buyer, what can you pay me? Like, what's fair? What do you think I'm worth? You know, and and take that into consideration. And if they say 500 bucks, thousand bucks, whatever, I'm gonna say, okay. And you know, you may be like, oh, Jeremy, that's crazy. You work for free, you do so much. Well, the honest truth is, is that I've probably done very, you know, minimal work for large commission one or two times in my life. And so I could probably give back a little bit on this side. Right. And my goal in giving that back would be, hey, yeah, OK, you can pay me back by giving me a testimonial. You can also pay me back by telling all of your friends, you know, that, you know, how I represented you, how I you know provided value and how I did all of this. You know, I appreciate it if you leave it out that I work for free, <laughs> you know, but, you know, it is what it is, because that next that buyer, if I get them into that home, that home will eventually be for sale and I will be the listing agent if I hooked them up on this end. And so it's kind of a pay it forward idea, but it's also something that you have to step back and understand the value of having a closed client. What's the value of the testimonial? What's the value of the referral? What's the value of taking this one transaction that maybe you put in a little more work and got compensated way less than you normally would, um, but what's the value you can take from that? And so if I have a collection of, you know, four or five of those and I do 35 or 60 buyer, you know, buyer transactions in the next, you know, one year to four years or however long it takes to get this sorted out, um, then I'm going to be way ahead. Right. And I'm going to have impact on someone's life and get them into home ownership. Right. Because my tagline isn't make as much money as I human possibly can. Um, off other people, my tagline is help others build wealth through real estate. And if I were to say, nope, I'm not doing it for 500 or a thousand bucks, like I'm just not, you know, I can't work for free. Now, certainly if that becomes the norm, then I would probably change my strategy. But I understand that I'm leaving a lot on the table as far as referrals and all of that. So that is my strategy moving forward. And you have to, you know, do what you do and all of that but I'm gonna provide so much value. I'm gonna show up for my clients regardless of if I'm getting 3% or 1% or five or two or 10 or whatever percent it is, I'm gonna show up for my clients, I'm gonna provide value, and I'm gonna absolutely build my business on that trust and integrity and loyalty because I still provided excellent service for them in the changing you know, market. And the truth is it's not changing that much at this time. So as people kind of quit doing the buyer prospecting, it slowly pull off. And certainly as the commission lawsuit came out, that was all the rage. And now we see people still doing open houses and doing all that. But as we progress and, and people start to kind of really change or get out of the industry as a result, I'm running towards that storm. I want to be a service to the community. I want to be a service to as many buyers as I possibly can, because if, for instance, it does change at some point, the buyer has to pay. And, you know, we all know that first time home buyers and other buyers are not going to be able to come forward with a, you know, commission that would be suitable um, in this market. And so we're going to have to find other ways to do it. And certainly if I have 25 buyers that no one helped over the next two years because they changed their strategy or got out of the industry, I'm going to be way ahead with the listings when it does actually change and come to fruition. So I hope this helps. Comment below. Would be happy to start a conversation um, about your strategies and what you're seeing. But just think of it a little bit differently. Run through the storm, because if you run through the storm, you're going to get to the other side a lot faster, because essentially, if you're standing there and you're dry, the storm's coming your way and you run through it instead of just stand still, you're going to get through it in double the time that it would be just standing still. And sometimes you can't run away from it. So let's face it head on. Let's have that bison mentality. Let's have a great 
uh, next year in real estate. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you want to talk about strategies or scripting or whatever, book a realtor game plan call with me. I'd be happy to chat. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.